Don't forget our motto. Don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck. The less fucks we give, the better we will play. I waited four fucking years for this day. Guys, this time we're gonna rewrite yes. history. This is also cool, boys. I'm very confident, guys. What are the qualities that make a good leader? Perseverance, dedication, intelligence, the will to be nothing less than the best. Kiro Kiroki Salehi Takansomi has all of these qualities and more. He dreamed of being the best, of hoisting the Aegis of Champions at the International. Not for money, not for glory but for the thrill of competition, to satisfy his desire to lead a team to the top and win. But there always seemed to be something missing, something not quite right. The timing, his confidence, his team. He always had it in him, the potential to be a true leader, a great player, a TI champion. But the journey was far from easy. This is his story. Kuroki was born in Iran, but grew up in Berlin, Germany. A medical condition kept him from being an active child, and as a result, he gained a love of video games. So I had like uh, walking problems when I was a child. It was very hard because when you're young, you have a lot of energy. Once he discovered Dota, he was fully drawn in and possessed by a fierce competitive spirit. By his mid-teens, he was already a tremendously talented player. In 2008, still just 16 years old, Kuroki would join Mouse Sports and his Dota career began in earnest. He was a deadly and versatile core with a strong mind for the game. Renowned for his Marana and Morphling, able to play both the hard carry and mid lane role. With Kuro, Mouse became one of the teams to beat in the world. And that year, he won the prestigious Gosu Gamers Carry of the Year by more than half the vote. With success and recognition fueling his dream to be the best, Kuro found a kindred spirit in Clement Puppy Ivanov, who helped him take the next step. The two first met when Puppy acted as a stand-in on Mouse Sports, and they formed a fast friendship. In fact, Kuro was overwhelmed by how similar his and Puppy's goals were, as well as their way of thinking about the game. Together, they resolved to create a new team. The result was King Surf International, who made their debut at the Dota League Masters 2009. Despite one of their players, Vigos, being unable to sort out his visa in time for the tournament, Puppy and Kiroki's faith in each other was unwavering, and King Surf won the event over Meet Your Makers. Surf International continued to develop into one of the best teams in Europe, and with Puppy as their leader and Kurogi as the right-hand man, they posted strong results across a number of tournaments in 2009. But by the final months of 2009, Kurogi's motivation was slipping. He decided he needed a change, and so he joined Meet Your Makers, where he took on a leadership role in his own right. At first, the change was fantastic. MYM were a dominant force in the scene, and Kurogi was once again motivated to win. However, just a few months later, a very poor result at SMM 2009 shattered Kuroki's newfound confidence. He realized he was not yet ready to lead a team on his own, and thus joined Puppy's new squad. For the next year or so, the team was a serious contender, but the results were not good enough for Puppy, who wanted nothing short of perfection. So when Nadis Finsair contacted Puppy in mid-2011 to join their team, Kuroki was confronted with a difficult decision. He knew that if he asked Puppy to stay, he would, but he also knew he could not hold him back from the opportunity. Puppy asked Kuroki to keep playing without him, but secretly, Kuroki was planning on disappearing from the scene. But when he contacted the other members of the team, they wanted to carry on with Kuroki as their new captain. With renewed dedication, he led them into the Dota 2 age and the International 2011. But there, they did not win a single match. Dyer's Ancient is under attack. For the next six months, Kuroki largely stayed away from the scene, occasionally playing here or there. However, his desire to win a TI and his passion for competition slowly brought him back. He played for Virtus Pro as the team attempted to qualify for the International 2012, but they failed to make it to the event. 
However, Kuroki was given a second chance. Mouse Sports Come With Me was unable to attend TI2, and Kuroki was asked to stand in at support. He accepted. Well, after the tournament, I told myself I'm going to play again Dota 2. Since I really didn't play last year, I was very inactive. So I'm, I actually made up my mind and want to play again since I'm starting to enjoy the game a lot again. So I'm really looking forward to playing it. While Mouse would finish in last place at TI2, the chance to play a TI once again reignited Kuroki's drive to play. Kuroki would wind up sticking with Mouse Sports for the rest of the year, his mind for the game and flexibility proving valuable as he played a number of roles. Despite Mouse Sports rarely making it out of the group stages, Kuroki was back in full swing and regaining his confidence. Over on Na'Vi, two slots had opened up following the departure of Light of Heaven and Arsart. Puppy offered Kuroki the chance to play support for Na'Vi. He accepted, reconnecting with his partner in crime after more than a year. With his friend leading him once again, his skills put to good use on an elite team and his drive to win returned. Kuroki on Na'Vi had a resurgence in 2013. A few months after adding Kuroki, Na'Vi were firing on all cylinders. With Puppy's leadership and drafting supplemented by Kuroki's knowledge, Na'Vi were widely considered to be a serious contender at TI3. For the first time in three years, Kuroki had a real shot at achieving Dota 2 glory. Na'Vi made the most of the opportunity. Item is anyway, so it's... Na'Vi can still just keep going. Yep. Now look for the mid racks again, the double tornadoes keeping him out, playing to Ravage and the silence! Orange Pop and call the GG! Na'Vi are into the winner's bracket! And yeah, keeping it on him. There's the MPL to follow it up. Puppy still alive, Mex through him. GG! Na'Vi has snatched a berth in the upper bracket grand finals from the brink of defeat! Navi tore through the event, fighting their way into the Grand Finals, and a showdown with their biggest rival, Alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Finals of the International Three! With all 10 players playing at their peak level, it was one of the greatest series of Dota ever played. In comes S4, he's found Thunder, and it comes the as well! This arm against the bear, he's not doing anything! Phoenix survived initiation, Hobo the said, bear. I want the, the bear. rapier! I want your Aegis! On the button, last way up Loda, but Loda is still alive. He's still got a satanic. A boast is hacked, and a boast will fall. Alliance, the Swedish monsters, G -G. they force a game five. This is the first time in TI history that we're going to a game number five. They don't have enough but time. But oh, oh, cancel four. TP. He's oh, he canceled the beat. Puppy, puppy, he's not going to be back in the base. He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh, Boy, on two. Cancel Thingy's TP as well. They are now huge on the trouble. But it's caught. Now if they go over the throne, it could be game. Funix down. Alliance are doing it. They need a little more for those to fall. Down in jeopardy. There's a glyph. It could be their last stand. Then he's back. He's going to try to focus everybody, but there's so much stuff. The Hitting on the done. throne. There's no more glyph available. Down to a half HP, a quarter HP. Alliance surrounding from all sides. They can't be. They want to do it. Round. They're going to do it. They're, They're going to do it. The Alliance wins. The they Alliance. win. Team. So close and yet so far, Kuroki had been just one game away from fulfilling his dream. But in a devastating Game 5, he and Na'Vi fell just short. Despite the Aegis of Champions remaining elusive, it was clear Kuroki's pro Dota career had reached new heights. He gave his share of Na'Vi's $632,000 prize winnings to his parents. So he was very proud that I achieved so much. Since the money I got, it's uh, money I don't need. So. They gave it to my to my parents. But for Kuroki, it never was really about the money. For me, it's I do it mainly for fun because I love being competitive, pretty much. And for many years, he studied psychology in addition to playing competitively. Navi stuck together and closed out 2013, winning five tournaments. They continued their strong form for the first few months of 2014. But by March, cracks were beginning to show. Navi's play suffered, and their results dipped sharply. 
By the time TI4 rolled around, an early exit at 7 to 8th place was not a surprise, even for Kuroki. I was kind of prepared to lose. I, I didn't feel that we, we can win. Like, even if we would win Cloud9, I think we wouldn't go that far this tournament. After two years on Na'Vi, it was time for a change. However, Kuroki wanted to remain with Puppy, and so he joined him at his new project, a player-founded org which would be called Team Secret. As part of the new roster, Kuroki returned to the carry role, proving his skills were not rusty in the slightest. Oh, give me the rampage! Come on, Kuroki, you know you want to! Oh, they're fine! Puppy with a big damage! Will we go for the crit? Crit, crit, crit! No! There it is! There is the rampage in the fountain! What a player! Now the double rampage! However, while Secret posted solid results right off the bat, Puppy's desire for perfection would cause rifts in the team. Fly left the team, followed by No-Tail, to eventually be replaced by evil geniuses Arteezy and Zai. The move pushed Kuroki back into the support role, but the results would prove to be well worth the sacrifice. After a rocky start at both DAC 2015 and Star Ladder Star Series Season 12, Secret would go on to win four of the five events they attended leading up to TI5, marking them as a clear favorite to win the Aegis. The team was skilled, smart, and had momentum. This time, surely, Kuroki would be victorious. Behind, Zai in a bit of trouble. Can he make his way out? There's the Ghost Scepter desperately hanging on, but Another going back shot. in! Arteezy! He charged in again! It'll pay with his life and with no Arteezy! This is going to be nigh impossible for Secret, massacred under the blazing guns of ZYF and CTY's endless crits. There's another Ehome, Ehome, Ehome have done it. They 2-0 Secret and they move forward. The fallout was inevitable, with many pointing fingers at Kuroki, especially Arteezy. To be a, to bring out the best in like S4 and and try to ignore my hate for Kuro. I could have done more, and I may have contributed to the loss at TI. Kuroki shouldered some of the blame, especially for his play at TI5, but also stated he was the scapegoat for the team's failure. With both sides digging in their heels, a split was unavoidable. Arteezy left to return to Evil Geniuses, and Kuroki decided it was time to move on. While there was no bad blood between Puppy and Kuroki, it was the opportunity for Kuroki to build something of his own and take another shot at leadership. This time, Kuroki was finally ready. He led his team with a firm belief in the mental aspect of the game. Well, the mental preparation is the main part of esports overall, I think, be it Dota or any other game. Uh, I mean, it's not uh, too much of a physical activity, so it's all in the mind. It's about, uh, it's just about being stable. In essence, Kuroki had shifted focus from being the core of his team's gameplay to a different sort of core. Nowadays, I'm motivated to make my team work, for example. I want to be a, a good captain for my team and bring them further and have success with them because it's, it brings a lot of joy. An emotional and strategic bedrock upon which his team could rely. They can always rely on me at the end of the day and gain confidence from me. So I'm kind of acting as the center of the team. With these philosophies in hand, Kuroki set about building his new team, dubbed Five Jungs. He sought out young players with tremendous talent. He selected Fada, Matumba Man, Jerax, and Mind Control, and forged ahead in making his new hand-picked squad a contender. Even after being picked up by Team Liquid, Kuroki and company posted a mixed bag of results for the remainder of 2015. Um, well, in the beginning it was quite difficult for me to get adjusted to my position, but by now I I do enjoy it. It's still like quite stressful at times, but it's very rewarding. So By early 2016, Kuroki's dedication and patience was starting to show dividends. It all finally came together in March, where the team put up a sensational performance at the Shanghai Major, culminating in a showdown against Puppy's new look, Team Secret. The Eternal Envy go for the one versus three play, and he will go for it. Kuro immediately the target, the Shallow Grave goes off first. This Eternal Envy like now battling it out with more heroes, heroes, but now Puppy's gonna be able to join them. He gets the doom onto a top of Mana, Snowball save for the moment being, but Eternal Envy's already cleaned up two, and now the chase begins. How many other heroes can they get? A nice long range ice shards from Jerix. He knows he's giving up his his own life, but he manages to save Matumba Man by blocking in Eternal Envy. Yeah, the Sunstrike's gonna fall too, but still not enough. Another Shackle Shot! Weeha! He showed it big in oh, the Invoker play from last game, face. but now Weeha's gonna be able to make sure it's a total wipe, and there it is! 
Congratulations, Team Secret take game four in one of the most dominant fashions we've seen in the grand finals. In just six months, Kuroki had led a brand new squad to challenge his old friend's superstar roster in the grand finals of a major. While the end result was disappointing, it was validation for Kuroki's leadership style, effort, and decision to split from Puppy and create something of his own. Liquid kept at it, becoming an elite force in the European scene. Kuroki was learning more and more about being a captain and a leader as the players under him grew more and more experienced and comfortable with his new system. Wins at Epicenter 2016 and second place at the Manila Major were the rewards for their efforts. Finally, it was time to face TI6. While a few of the players had never before played on Dota 2's biggest stage, Kuroki and Liquid were still confident they could make a splash. Things, however, did not go according to plan. Three for three falls back, but the ranks are falling. Mushi's gonna get the objectives. Buyback from Ohio. Mid one looking at the line, and the bar is dragged from Ohio. They've done it. They've absolutely GG. done it. Fnatic 2-0 Liquid. Liquid are going home in the lower bracket of Fnatic. Clearly, something still was not quite right. Kuroki had learned much in his first year as a full captain, but the Aegis was once again out of reach. He did not give up. Liquid was his team, his players. They needed him to keep going, keep teaching them. He knew they could get there. But first, a roster change was in order. Fada decided to step away from the scene for a while and Jerax left for OG. In a blockbuster move, Liquid picked up one of the hottest players in the scene, Miracle. A few months later, GH was brought in as the final piece of the puzzle. With the new roster in place, Kuroki had everything he needed to finally reach the top. We have an approach of trying to trust each other and believe in each other, and especially like believing in the decision making of Kuro and his rafting abilities. Liquid surged to the top of the pack and they began to win. A lot. Kuroki received heaps of praise for his steadfast leadership, drafting savvy and relentless work ethic as Liquid racked up the hardware. I think in the case of our Dota team, Kuroki is that building block. He Not only does he draft and lead in the game, um, he, he also performs uh, an incredible amount of, of duties that would normally fall upon the coach. With such a dynamic and skilled team, he was not going to let this chance slip away. And then, it was time. The International 2017. Everything Kuroki had done in the past two years, everything he had learned and worked for had led him here. In the group stage, Liquid looked unstoppable. But can IGV really hold without paparazzi in the game? That is the question. Miracle picks up the double kill as he takes down the bat and into GG is called. It's finally over as Liquid can close it up and will open up TI's run with uh, the, the, getting a 2-0 victory against IGV. That's GG, they already, they already done because in the meantime, we, what we didn't see was my control and Matuba Man just didn't care. About what I was, was watching happening. that, I was like... <laughs> they just didn't care and they just went for the building. GG's called. And, yep. That means that uh, Liquid goes into the final day, they have one more match to go, they are 11 and 3. They have to play against C But then, their confidence got to them. Liquid are down. They're now a corpse that's being punched, kicked, and about to be put six feet under. IG have the buybacks if they need them. They've got the damage. They've got the control. The position is theirs. The game is theirs. The series is theirs. And top six is theirs. Kuroki was not pleased, but Liquid had another shot. They were staring down the long, difficult road of the lower brackets. Kuroki did not allow his team to misstep again. Can he hold the base? Uh -oh. Miracle's in on his own. He needs a little help. He's going to need it soon. GH coming from behind. They walk him down. Can they kill him once? The base is crumbling. Perfect. Death by a thousand cuts. Going for the tier four. Mind control pop. That BKB. He's down to half. Can they actually kill him? But no. It's going to be this. fine. He's still fighting this. Miracle is fighting this. GG. The last time he was here, Kuroki had had his dream ripped away from him. But this time, however, destiny called. This time was the right time. Now the grand finals of the International 7 begins with Newbie versus Team Lake. At the end of a quick game one, 
unless Newby pulled off some absolutely miraculous smoke play. And nope. GG, they, don't. they know it's over. You lost two lanes of Frax, Liquid Shirt, the lower bracket matchup. He's gonna try and run the back lines. Blink bar is strike, holding Miracle into position. Metamans are almost down the mana void. Boogie couldn't get it off, now the exit from GH will control him. And this will be a huge kill if they can claim it. Andy Mange is falling, Andy Mange is down for two minutes. They've lost the numbers. There isn't enough defense here from Nubi without the enemy. None that big call. They just don't have the damage at GG. 34 minutes. Team Liquid more than dominating. Ripping apart Nubi at the seams in game two. Kuroki was once again one game away, but even though he had it all in his hands, he would not allow his team to lose focus. He knew the job was not done. Stop thinking about winning. Focus on this game. Okay. The reaction point was all about Miracle, the Virus Art and Taka. It'll connect, follow up Fisher for KP. He'll get the son of the Massa, of course, in the middle of the field, Darcy. Code it off, Miracle, the anchor is left there from GH on the obvious side. And then it's just for two bits with the side. SCC is gone for two minutes. The Liz Shapers bouncing back down, Taka trying to hide himself, but right now it's all liquid, liquid, liquid. They have taken down four. He'll get the buyback from the Venom as a GH for the fourth up. He won't even die. Here comes the Echo Slam. Was it going to be enough or not yet? The Fissure is out. Necro Control. It's a nice oldie from Boogie. Maybe the regeneration is enough. Miracle. The Agassi model will pop face. Able to shackle him forever. Holding him. Up they come once more. No hex, no miss. It's on a bubble. Only slash on top of Boogie. The Shrine is doing enough. But he is off. A Miracle Jones. Double kill for him. The Fuse of Legend. CCC. On Fentor. Controls the back line. The Exorcism. It needs to do some damage. But right now, Nubi dropping like flies. And They have been absolutely fantastic over the last few days. After seven years of struggle, ups and downs, shattered confidence, and roster rebuilds, Kuroki had led a team to glory. He had finally succeeded. He had won the International. Today, Kuroki and Liquid are still working and still winning. Having achieved his dream, Kuroki has now set his sights on repeating as a TI champion. He's one of the only three players to attend every TI. He's won the most money of any esports player ever. But like we learned before, for Kuroki, it's not about the money. There's a reason after all these years, all the heartbreak and all the struggles, he's kept going. Still, as it's always been, it's always been the thrill of victory, the love of competition, and the joy of leading a band of brothers forward. Perseverance, dedication, intelligence, the will to be nothing but the best. These are what define a true leader. These are what define a Dota legend. These are what define Kuroki.